好，接下来关心选手篇 p o r z i n g i s 确定会在总冠军赛的 Game One 复出，而且要碰上他的老东家，更有话题性。好 ，KP 过去跟卢卡组成的欧陆双星拍档，最后是以失败告终。而且在这之后，还传出两个人感情不和的言论，来听听卢卡怎么说。NBA 总冠军赛，独行侠交手萨尔提克的最终对决即将展开。而在这之前，绿衫军迎来好消息，就是当家明星中锋 Chris p o r z i n g i s 因为小腿伤势，经历一个月左右的缺阵，最近能够在总冠军系列赛的 Game One 重磅回归。I'm feeling better each day.、Uh, it's been a long process. I'm not gonna lie.、Um, it's been tough to sit out, obviously.、Um, but.、Uh... But、uh, I've tried to stay as engaged as I can with the team and be around the team and and do my work and then be with the team.、Um, but it sucks. It really, really does suck. And、um, but we're here now, and 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 I'm feeling much better.、Um, put in a lot of hours to to get to this point. And、um, look forward to yeah to getting some some action on the floor. KP 回归总冠军赛也意味着他将要在这个登上联盟巅峰宝座的最后一里路，碰上昔日的老东家独行侠，不止对战组合狗戏精，连话题性也是占尽版面。I think it's going to be great.、Um, played there for two and a half years, and and、uh, I'm happy for for everybody in Dallas in a way, you know.、Uh, a lot of like great relationships I have there, and and.、Um, And yeah, and I cannot say like I think I think they deserve to to you know to have some success like they like they've had this season,、um, and it's gonna be it's gonna be fun going up against my old team, going back to Dallas,、uh, playing some games there. So、uh, looking forward to it. 独角兽自从二零一九年加入独行侠与欧洲金童卢卡·当吉什，组成华丽的欧洲双星拍档，当时也让人期待两位的化学效应，但很可惜没有打出精彩成绩。二零一九到二零二零赛季 ，KP 因为伤势影响，整个赛季只打了五十七场。那一年，独行侠季后赛第一轮被淘汰，在下一个赛季也是一样，第一轮早于快艇，三比四被淘汰，打包回家放暑假。直到二零二二年，双星确定拆伙。两人虽然在场上的效应雷声大雨点小，但是场外感情却是毋庸置疑。对于网络上关于他们不和的言论，卢卡更是亲自澄清。You see, that's why I don't watch a lot of that, because people don't know. <laughs> I talked to Chandler Parsons maybe twice in my life, so I don't know how he would know that.、Uh, but me and KB have a good relationship.、Uh, I don't know what people to say otherwise. 有一句话说，分开才是最好的安排。KP 前进萨尔提克之后，找到自己的定位。今年赛季缴出场均二十点一分以及七点二篮板，并帮助绿衫军登上全联盟的龙头。当吉斯则是逐步成长，变成能够独当一面的当家一哥。如今更帮助独行侠前进 Finals， 两人都在各自的位置上帮助球队。而如今顶峰相见，更让人期待这对昔日拍档究竟会在高张力的赛场上擦出怎么样的火花。好 ，KP 即将归队，让团队士气大振。而绿衫军能不能一举迈向总冠军，就是最后的一道关卡。好，不管对手是谁，今年的绿衫军都比以往更加成熟。而过去曾帮进入塞尔提克，在2008年拿下过冠军的大学长 Paul Pierce， 也来亲自告诉大家，夺冠之路到底有多艰辛。Paul Pierce, take one. Who, who, who am I talking to? You? <laughs> oh, man, game one, round two, another step toward where we need to be. I think in order to be great, in order to be able to get to the top, you have to have a certain mindset. Celtics select Paul Pierce. It's stressful when you want to be one of the best, when you want to win. It comes with anxiety. It comes with blood, sweat, and tears. Good action, thirty minutes on practice. But I knew how much time I put into it. I never believed in failure. It was.
was no article you could write that would put me down. It's hard to win. You want to be the best, the pressure come with that. Trials and tribulations come with that. Heartache come with that. And when you battle test it, it builds something in you to where you hate that feeling. I feel like it's a real different energy around this team. The heartaches of last year, the year before, they got something to prove. Because they know that when they walk into that building, we don't hang up division banners. We don't hang up conference banners. We only hang up championship banners. They know they're close. And I think they're ready to get to the mountaintop. 好，我们接下来把麦克风交给 LeBron James， 由他来聊聊他的前搭档 Kyrie Irving。好，老詹是直接封 KI 为球场上的魔法师，而看见小老弟展现过人天赋的同时，他自己却难掩失望的神情，究竟是为什么呢？一起来听听看。So with Kyrie, what is your favorite thing about Kyrie the basketball player? I, I, listen, I will call Kyrie the wizard all the time, like all the time, like. There was nothing on the basketball floor that Kyrie couldn't do, and sitting here watching it, you know, I'm like, I'm playing like so fucking happy and so proud, and to watch him and continue his growth and whatever the case may be. And at the same time, I'm so fucking mad at the same time that I am not his running mate anymore. <laughs> so I, I'm like. I just remember those times, and, and to back to what you were saying, JJ, like he to have a guy like Kyrie Irving as the ultimate wild card, that's like, that's like having a, a, a <laughs> that's like having a draw four in your hand every time yeah. someone deals you cards in Uno, like every single time, because he has the ability to, like you said, I saw in Game One, Western Conference Finals, Game One, you know. I think up until that point, I don't know the the, the stat because I'm not writing down the stats and I don't call the games like you guys, but. I think Kyrie was only averaging like eight points in the first half, like in the second round of the playoffs. You know, he was he was getting a yeah. sixteen to twenty in the in the, in the yeah. second half, but in the first half of games, you know, he it was like six. To, it was like six to eight. Yeah, I don't know like the exact number. Points, it was six to you know? eight. Yeah. And and you like okay, you know, you know you're gonna have Kyrie in the fourth, but but I need you sometimes in the first half too, brother. Uh, but like what he did in game one, it was like at the at Western Conference Finals, you was like. It, that was like, oh shit! Dallas may be able to not only win the Western Conference Finals, they might be able to win the whole thing because of that wild card. I don't, I don't, I have so many words to praise Kyrie that I end up with absolutely none because it's just, it's so. He's the most gifted player the NBA has ever seen. He has the best gifts I've ever seen of any NBA player. I've never seen a guy in my NBA life that feels better at times shooting with his offhand than he does with his with his primary hand. If Kyrie's off in a game with his right hand, he will literally go exclusively to his left hand. I've never seen nothing like that. The shot. One thing I'm thinking: the shot that he made versus Denver towards the regular yeah. end of the regular season on on Joker, yeah, it's one of the most ridiculous shots I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, he's he's I, he, he's just that special. I, I said this in the first round closeout game. I think it was the closeout game. He had he had PJ Isoed <sighs> right in front of the Dallas bench. Oh my goodness! And he go and he went to his dribble package. And he he hit him with the left to right, and then did the delay gather with his footwork to create yep. the separation. Shot it. Uh, ball goes in. He doesn't see it go in. He kind of just reacts to his you know his teammates and and the crowd. I, I'm not sure PJ Tucker could have played better defense. And I made the comment on air, and I and I think I I think I mean this. I'm not sure there's ever been a player that's more aesthetically pleasing when he has it going. Like it's, 
his game is beautiful. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's Absolutely. it's it's a he always talks about he's he's you know, basketball players are artists, he's an artist out on the court. And I gotta be honest, like it's not invalid. I'm sometimes <laughs> like, yeah, this this guy. This guy's an artist. You no, called him a wizard, I'll call him an artist. No, it's absolutely. there. Absolutely. And by the way, we, we're both saying the exact same thing. And he's just, he's remarkable. 